The fractal design to fine R4 case gets featured on the WAN Show Build Logs of the Week section more than any other case. Click now to learn more about it. I am gonna spare you guys the unboxing portion of this unboxing because we have a lot to do. It comes in a pretty decent dual layered box and has hard foam inside, which normally bothers me more, particularly with larger cases, but with smaller cases, it bothers me less because there's less concern that they're gonna be extremely heavy and cause breakage when in shipping. So this, my friends, is the Bitphoenix Phenom or Phenom or however you prefer to pronounce that word, like the older AMD processors, but these are all new sort of. They're based very closely on the original Bitphoenix Prodigy, but with a couple of upgrades that I personally think are very, very nice. So let's take the white one. It's available in a variety of colors, just like the Prodigy, and we're going to have black and white here in the showcase. And we've got a nice little Bitphoenix logo that to me is a lot more subtle than the one that was on the original Prodigy that really popped out of the front. Ventilation-wise, it's also taken a bit of a middle road. The original Prodigy had either like little tiny vents along the sides, or or it had a full mesh front. Well, the Phenom or Phenom has reasonable size vents on the sides here, and then it has a closed front, just like the white version of the Prodigy that I think gives it a very sleek, very classic look, but doesn't compromise on cooling to nearly the same extent the white Prodigy did. IO is still on the side. Wouldn't have minded seeing this move to the front or the top, but every position has disadvantages. Like even on the top, you know, your cat can step on it or whatever else I have had that happen. So there you go. Uh, neither of them are windowed variants. You've got the same kinds of accents up here on the top that you've got on the side with little grills. And then on the top of the case, you've got that same removable fan grill that we saw on the Prodigy that gives you access to, ah yes, radiator support. So you can chuck a dual 120 millimeter radiator in there, no problem. Which leads us to the back of the case. So this is where not all phenoms are created equally. There are two versions, just like the Prodigy now, where there's one that supports mini ITX motherboards at most. So that's the one right here on your left. And there's one that supports micro ATX. So that is four expansion slot motherboards as opposed to just one, but compromises some of the other expandability with respect to drives and water cooling radiators and other stuff like that. So let's break these babies open and compare them internally. So I've loosened all the screws and it's time for the big reveal. Much like the original Prodigy, the build quality is very solid. Nice strong side panels, almost no flex to them whatsoever. They've got some nice weight to them, which unfortunately does make the cases a little bit heavier, but what do you want? You want it to be light, you want it to be strong, you want it to be cheap, you know, you gotta make compromises somewhere. All right, so removing these side panels, we are gonna reveal a couple of things. Number one is the SSD mounts that are built into the sides here. You can put two, two and a half inch drives there, no problem, as well as all the interior I.O. That USB 3.0 port can be adapted to USB 2. There is an included adapter and there's a custom PCB here that handles all of the I.O. So we find the same thing on the other one and whoa, everything else that's inside these cases this looks pretty darn different and yet familiar. So this one right here, what do you recognize that from? Well, that is the interior of the original Bitphoenix Prodigy. So you've got fan mounts here at the front, lots of room for intake, whether you want to mount, you know, dual 120s or I think you actually have to remove the five and a quarter inch bay, but you can do that. You just remove the front bezel and pull that off. You can do dual 120s, throw a radiator in there. You can do, you know, 140s. I believe it can do 160s and or 180s. There's lots of different options in there for fans in the front. You've also got five expansions bays here that are compatible with either two and a half inch or three and a half inch drives, a five and a quarter inch expansion bay that can be used for something else should you so desire. In fact, it comes with a three and a half inch plastic adapter in it. And that pretty much does it for this side. A little bit of cable management room here. And of course that attention to detail. See the way that they folded over the metal here so it doesn't leave any sharp edges. I'm gonna go ahead and give you another angle on that. That means you're not gonna cut open the power supply cables that you're trying to run through here in cable management here, which is good because it is an extremely tight fit for your power supply in this particular case. They have a fan filter on the bottom of the Phenom that has the ITX layout because that is that means you are intended to install your power supply with the fan facing down so the heat doesn't interfere with any other components in your system. And over here on the other side you find a little bit more room for cable management as well as, ah uh, yes, if you were to remove and check this out, all screws 
very few rivets on this case. If you were to remove all your drive cages, you could actually make room for radiators here at the front, and you could just mount your two and a half inch SSDs to see inside here. You could mount them to the other side of the power supply and motherboard tray enclosure, and you could add SSDs that way. So you could throw four SSDs in here, having actually removed all of the drive cages, giving you lots of room for water cooling. It has support for a single 120 or 140 millimeter fan in the back and two expansion slots, which might seem weird because ITX only has one, but that, my friends, is because you can install a dual slot graphics card without having to do any modding or anything like that. So there you go. That is the ITX Phenom or Phenom, whichever you prefer. Now let's go through the MATX Phenom or Phenom, whichever you prefer. So you can see right here that our five and a quarter inch uh, sled seems to have been attached to here for some reason. These are engineering samples, so it's possible that the packaging wasn't quite final because I know for a fact that this box is supposed to be there and not this guy right here. So this is a five and a quarter to three and a half inch or two and a half inch adapter, just like we found in the other case. And it can go up here in the five and a quarter inch cage. You also can install either using the vibra anti-vibration mounts here, two three and a half inch or two two and a half inch drives using the hooks as well as the uh, oh looks like three oh my bad sorry about that so three two and a half inch drives if you prefer to go that rate using the hooks and the um, screws right here you can also see that the fan layout is extremely different there's no power supply at the back so there's 120 or 140 here five expansion slots which is great because some mini ATX boards even though they only have four slots have their full speed PCIe right on the bottom so if you want to put a graphics card in there running an SLI or Crossfire you're going to have to make use of that fifth slot great a bit Phoenix to think of this your IO your toolless removal of these uh, slot hold downs as well as oh yeah there's a power in but hold on a second where does that go okay it goes here so there's an extension cable here that actually runs to the power supply, which is boom on the bottom of the case. So that means these feet are important. You're going to be taking up air into the bottom of the case. This heat shield is for use if you install hard drives as opposed to fans in the bottom here. Although I personally uh, don't anticipate that that'll make much of a practical difference to the performance of the... Uh, of the, the, you know, cooling those drives or anything like that. The rest of the interior is pretty straightforward, so you can find your MATX motherboard tray over here. Cable management should be relatively straightforward in here, and you should be able to hide most of it either up here in the top in the five and a quarter inch bay that you're unlikely to be using because, whoa, there is no five and a quarter inch front. <laughs> Ha! So guys, remember, the five and a quarter inch bay internally is because a lot of these components have, or a lot of the design has been reused from the Prodigy. So you're really meant to just install drives with the adapters. All right, so you can see your, so you can hide all your cables over here. Your NATX motherboard tray is reasonably strong considering that it has an extremely large CPU cutout, again, with that folded over metal. So you're not gonna accidentally cut anything on it. You can also install more drives. So there's anti-vibration mounts here, as well as more fans down in the bottom of the case should you see fit so you can put dual 120s down there it should be noted that the water cooling options are not nearly as extensive for the MATX version and if you wanted to install a dual 140 millimeter rad in the top while you could you would be a little bit limited in terms of which expansion slots you can use because there would be some interference there so if you really want to fill it full of water cooling radiators you might want to go with the MITX version you can of course still install a single 120 millimeter radiator at the back without any difficulty. I think that pretty much covers it other than the accessories that are included and I can tell you what's in here before I even open it. So there's a USB 3 to USB 2 adapter for the built-in I.O. and there's a bunch of screws and some cable ties. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Leave a comment if you thought it was kind of weird that I unboxed two different colors of two different cases within the same video and if you're okay with it let me know. If you weren't okay with it then let me know about that too. Check out the Linus Tech Tips forum if you want to discuss any of the latest cool technology that we've unboxed on this channel. And as always, I think I already said don't forget to subscribe and I've completely lost track of what I've said and haven't said at this point, so yeah.